Today, I'll be talking about why I'm currently not buying any Chinese stocks and a little bit about just my thoughts and opinions on Chinese stocks as well as just international stocks overall. But before I get into the video, if you haven't checked out my channel before, I talk about investing, the stock market, things like that. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely head over to my channel and consider subscribing. But um, other than that, getting into it. Uh, so there's been a lot of hype, it seems like quite lately, um, about Chinese stocks, and it seems to be like every few months or so. Um, it changes the stocks here and there, but um, generally it's the same type of stocks. It seems to be Chinese tech related stocks pretty heavily, as well as like Chinese emerging market stocks. And I'm sure some of the names um, that I'm going to mention in this video, like Alibaba, JD.com, um, some of the other ones I actually can say I am not um, super confident in how to pronounce them. Like there's uh, basically the Chinese version of Google and then also a Chinese version of like Netflix slash like um, YouTube. I believe it's called like Badu is one of them. I'm actually not sure how to say some of these names, but um, a lot of stocks like these, um, they've been in the news quite lately and they've also been pretty hyped up but a lot of these stocks are very, very volatile. And I do personally think that some of them can provide pretty good growth. But um, overall, I personally do not invest in any Chinese stocks. And a lot of people ask me, uh, why not? Do you think, you know, um, the Chinese, those individual stocks are bad? Do you think the entire Chinese stock market's bad? Or, you know, do you just not invest in international stocks? And um, it's, you know, it's not necessarily specifically any of those reasons, but I'm going to go over some of them right now. So one reason I don't buy them is because I don't like buying stocks that are super hyped up. I don't like buying into the news. So if you follow the stock market at all, I'm sure you see Alibaba, um, Badu, I think is how you say it, um, JD.com, a lot of companies like these, they're in the news, in the spotlight, whether it be positive or negative. And I think their price gets changed quite a bit due to this news. And not that it's necessarily always a bad thing to buy stocks that are in the news and are currently being hyped up, but um, in my past experiences, uh, this can often lead to price changes that have nothing to do with the stock's fundamentals or with the stock's um, actual valuation, but just simply has to do with whether or not Jim Cramer on CNBC said it's a good buy or not. And I don't usually like investing in stocks like that. I usually like to wait, if I do think it's a good company, wait a little bit for it to get out of the news for the hype to die down because it usually doesn't last very long. Um, there are some stocks that will probably always be in the news, but um, there also are some that will probably die out relatively soon and I think Chinese stocks will probably be one of those but um, they have been very very volatile going up and down lately so that's one reason why I don't buy them um, the next reason is because um, I mean this is this might be a little bit difficult to understand I hope I convey this point well enough and so that you can understand it but um, I really don't like investing in stocks outside of the US I'm personally from the US I'm from New York um, I well one I'm not very familiar with stocks outside of the US um, I just solely focus on US stocks and US companies um, I'm not nearly as familiar with um, international stocks as I am with US stocks and that's just my personal experience, personal knowledge, things like that. And um, another reason why, and probably the bigger reason why I don't invest in international stocks is because um, when I invest in a company that's in the US, that's you know based in the US, whatever it might be, uh, I, I feel pretty secure overall about how the US economy is going to do in the long run, as well as how their political system is going to do in the long run. Now, you may have your opinions about, you know, the current president or, you know, maybe your state senator or uh, maybe, I don't know, someone else higher up in the political system. But overall, I don't feel anytime soon that there's going to be a coup or that, um, you know, the uh, you, whole entire US political system is going to be overthrown or anything of that nature. And I really don't think I'm too far off by saying that um, regardless of what your political beliefs are, um, I mean, the worst thing that could happen, I guess, is if a president gets impeached or assassinated or something of that nature. But um, even that is relatively unlikely to happen and probably wouldn't have any long lasting effects, at least over the next five to 10 plus years. But on the other hand, when investing internationally, and in no way am I trying to bash any other cultures or any other um, countries or anything of that nature, um, while investing internationally not only has pretty much all international stock markets underperformed the United States stock markets in the past 100 years, uh, most of them actually haven't even been around for that long. But 
Um, just a couple of things about that. Um, the, if you look at the S&P 500 compared to, um, let's just say, um, the Japanese index or even the SSE composite index at the same time frames, um, there has been like very, very little or minimal growth compared to how the S&P has performed as well as the entire um, just United States economy as well as just the entire US stock market. And I'll be you know flashing some graphics up here to show that as well and feel free to do your own research. And um, don't get me wrong, there are, I'm sure there are some countries that I'm just unaware of that have been doing well, but when you compare it with um, just simply two big economies that I could think of like Japan and China, and specifically China that we're talking about right now, um, if you just simply compare the SSE compared to the S&P or Dow Jones, NASDAQ, any of those three, all three of the US ones have performed much, much better in the past 10, 15, 20, even 30, 40 plus years um, just directly by comparing them. And um, that's not saying that there aren't any individual Chinese stocks that are, you know, they're not all bad or anything like that. And I'm sure there are some good ones out there. But overall, the way I invest, I typically like to have a diverse portfolio. And I typically choose for stocks that are relatively larger market caps that are, you know, more blue chip stocks, dividend yielding, thing of that nature. And uh, most Chinese stocks don't really fit that category. Um, really out of all the Chinese stocks that I follow or pay any attention to, um, the only one that I could probably consider buying is, would probably be Alibaba. And um, right now they've actually been getting hit pretty hard. Their price is a lot lower. I think that has to do with a lot of um, top executives leaving. Like I think Jack Ma is a very, very smart guy, knows a lot about what he's doing, um, but he left unfortunately. But I think their new CEO that stepped in is actually probably going to do a pretty good job as well. But um, overall, um, you know, there really aren't a whole lot of Chinese companies I would feel comfortable with for those reasons that I was saying. And once again, in no way am I saying that there aren't any good Chinese stocks out there. I'm sure there are some. There are some like Alibaba. Um, I can't think of any off the top of my head, but um, there are plenty of stocks in the Chinese market that have performed pretty well over the past few years or so. But like I said before, um, if you just simply compare the indexes to each other from the Chinese to the Japan to the US, um, you know, they're not very close. I mean, if you were just investing in the Chinese or excuse me, the Japanese index from like, I think even from like the 70s, um, you would have gotten 0% returns from then. And that is just not make me feel very confident about that international market. And of course, that's just one in particular. But same with one like the Chinese, if you even look at the US park stock market, if you invested it at the peak of 2007 compared to now, it has increased a significant amount. And if you have invested in the Chinese stock market around the 2007 range to now, you would have gotten virtually no returns at all. So um, that is just a little bit, you know, um, I guess startling numbers and numbers that sort of convinced me not to invest in those types of stocks. And um, like I was saying earlier as well, um, I, in no way am I trying to like bash them or anything, but um, I mean, literally, if you just look at the Chinese political system comparing it to the US, and once again, these are like totally my opinion you could have totally different opinions and I am not trying to bash them and I am much more unknowledgeable about the Chinese political system and their whole economic system than I am the US, but um, they really are still ran by what is called a communist party, even though you you know there's a lot of experts out there that would argue that the Chinese economy is more of a capitalist one. But I mean, just looking at their total political system, I mean, just things of that nature, um, I could not feel very comfortable saying that in the next 10, 15 plus years, the Chinese political system is going to remain the same and that they're going to be the same people running it in the same sort of economic way. Um, I just simply don't feel very comfortable saying that. And um, I know the terminology might be a little bit different here, but um, I, I don't mean to offend anyone once again, but I mean, some would still consider China in a developmental state. It's still technically a developing country from a, like more of a sociological aspect, but um, you know, I just don't feel comfortable investing in a country like that. But um, other than that, guys, it's really it for this video. Um, once again, not trying to say that Chinese stocks are horrible. You should never invest in them. Those are just my personal opinions, thoughts, and reasons on why I don't invest in them and probably why I won't anytime soon. And But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it shed some light on that because I see a lot of YouTubers out there talking quite a bit about um, Chinese stocks. Like, what Chinese stocks am I buying this month or what am I buying that month? And, you know, if they were buying Chinese stocks, they probably aren't doing very good right now. So hopefully you weren't following their lead. 
But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. And like I said before, if you're new to the channel and haven't checked me out before, I talk about investing, the stock market, personal finance, really anything that has to do with money as well as entrepreneurship. So if you're interested in any of that kind of stuff, definitely head over to my channel. And if you like what you're seeing, consider subscribing. And also in the description is the link to my podcast, Instagram, as well as a Facebook investing group. But other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video.